Today we're gonna be making prosciutto pinwheels with cream cheese, pepper on Chinese, Parmesan, and some seasonings. So I don't know how this is gonna work, but basically what I did is I took some prosciutto and I lined it out like this. So you just take it and you kind of put them overlapping a little bit, just four slices and I did a little rectangle. And what I'm gonna do now is lay out some more in this direction. And I'm thinking it will hold together if I roll it, right? So once we do this, we're just going to, I mean, it's very sticky, it should hold together. We're just gonna spread a few more pieces long ways. And whatever doesn't go on here, I'm definitely going to eat. I think I'll get a little bite out of this. All right, so boom, we did that. Mmm, yummy, yummy. All right, so this is what it looks like. Now we can set it aside. I have some on the bottom of my foot because I dropped a piece. All right, so we take a little bowl. Now we're just gonna mix everything up. This is, I use the one third less fat cream cheese I find it's much creamier. It's like easier to mix. And this is three ounces. And now we just have like probably four or five pepper and Chinese that I chopped up. The thing that I did was I, I put a bunch of them inside of a napkin in my hand and I just squeezed really hard to get all of the juice out. And now we're gonna add about an ounce of Parmesan. I just bought your cookbook and I love it. Hey, I'm so glad you like it, Jojo. I made those almond flour bagels. Oh, nice, Disco, what did you think? And then some Italian seasonings. Love your book, received it yesterday, all the way to Denmark. Oh, let's get it. Thank you so much. All right, so now we're just mixing this up, which I still don't think the cream cheese has been sitting out long enough because I like microwaving it for a few seconds, honestly, because it just mixes so easily. What I might do, if I can't get it to mix like soup, there we go, it's good. Mm, I bet this will be good to just taste like as it is. And I honestly think these pinwheels, you could either eat them cold or hot. I don't know which way, what do you guys think? I just ordered your cookbook. Hey, thank you, Daniel. Andrea, you made the bagels too, nice. So the disco said the bagels were kind of dry. So if you eat them by themselves, I think any bagel just by itself wouldn't be that good. Did you put cream cheese on it? Made your black and chicken in the air fryer and it turned out great. Oh, nice. I love your cookbook from Becky. Thank you so much, Becky. By the way, shout out to Becky. Whenever I do uh, Q and A's, I notice your name. Whenever I do Q and A's, you ask a bunch of questions and uh, I love answering questions on those things. If I don't post them to my stories, I do get back to them on DMs. A lot of the time I've answered them before and uh, that's why I don't answer them on my stories. All right, so we've got this mixed up. Now we're gonna take our big sheet of prosciutto. Mm. Ooh, let's try this first. This is what it looks like. How can I order your book? You can go to Amazon. Type in carefree keto. Mine were the opposite, too moist. Loved them, but next time using less yogurt. They were great though. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that was the first time I've heard someone say they were dry. All right, so now we have our little thing of prosciutto and we are going to put this on it. And let's just pray to the Lord that these roll up okay. Show you our cookbook. All right, this is what it looks like. Carefree Keto. Has everything you need to know about keto, low carb, eating healthy, meal plans, grocery lists, my whole story. So much written information, but it also has over 100 recipes, all with pictures and all that good stuff. 
It's hard to like flip through each one, but you can get it on Amazon. We have 106 reviews. My goal, my like ambitious goal is a thousand reviews for 2023, which at this rate, we're getting like 50 reviews a month. So uh, probably not going to reach it, but I can dream. I do notice though, the first cookbook, Breaking Up With Carbs, it kind of, I released it in 2020. I can't. I'm not going to sit here and make you guys watch me lick my fingers. I know some people don't mind it. Some people do. It just stops me from talking. So I'm going to pretend there's no cream cheese on my finger right now. But the first book, Breaking Up With Carbs, I need like something. I can't talk. I'll talk about it in a second. I have to focus to roll this up. So here's what I'm thinking. I need like a... I need like something like this to put under so I can make sure I'm getting all of the pieces of the prosciutto on this roll. Okay, here we go. There we go, that's perfect, okay. Now we're just gonna keep rolling. It's working. It's actually working. This is so cool. Can you guys see? It's working. Like, what? I did not know what was gonna happen. And I'm serious. So don't say yes or no, because I don't know. Um, yes or no answers make this hard for me to interpret which one you're saying. Should I eat these cold or should I put them in the air fryer? What do you guys think? say cold or air fryer. I think if we did cold, what would be really good would be just kind of like how they are. I, I could incorporate balsamic vinegar somehow, but now the real challenge is slicing them. I don't know how it's gonna slice. Warm up, air fried, do both room temperature, air fryer. So right now air fryer is winning. All right, let me grab a Sarah Ted knife. Actually, last time I used the wrong knife on a recipe, it messed up the stuffed chicken. Should I use a Sarah Ted knife or like a sharp knife? We can try this one cold because this end didn't really get a whole lot in it. This is actually working. Ooh, they look so good. You guys have to see the inside of this, like how it is. Oh. I guess it, it cut fine with the sharp knife here. Oh my gosh. Mmm. Mmm. And I don't know how fragile this is. So I have some, some miniature pointy trees that we can poke it with. Air fryer with tape sauce on the bottom. You mean like tomato sauce? Oh yeah. Okay, so this, the rest of the recipe, I don't need to focus as much. So I'll go back to what I was saying. So I released Breaking Up With Carbs. My first like real book was in 2020. And it did okay, you know, it sold some copies, it got some reviews, but it was like a whole year where it didn't get, and I can't tell this story and read comments and cut this. So I'm gonna tell the story and cut this and then I'll read the comments in a second. But uh, it did okay. So, but then whenever me and Anna started cooking together in like January, 2021, the book sales just skyrocketed and it was crazy. For like three or four months, I sold way more books during those three months than I did the whole first year 
that I initially released it. And I think there's a few reasons why that could have happened. Possibly just the fact that Anna was cooking with me. People liked the like the family vibe of like cooking together. Also, just having a girl in the kitchen is more relatable as most of my audience. Like 90% of my followers are female. Maybe that could have had something to do with it. But also I think like there was a tipping point of reviews where once I had gotten a certain number of reviews over the course of 2020, by time 2021 rolled around, anytime someone heard of the book, they could be like, oh, it has 400 reviews or however many I had, it must be good. So then it's the sales started taking off and, uh, and it did really well like a year after it was released. And I'm wondering if something like that's gonna happen with Carefree Keto where it's selling great, you know? Um, my goal is really to make enough money off of the book. I get like seven bucks a copy for the physical, two bucks for the ebook. My goal is to make enough money off the book that I don't like depend on brand deals to pay the bills because you just, you never know. So, um, so right now it, it's not that many book sales. Like it's probably like a quarter of the way that I need, but I think once it gets to a certain number of reviews, there's a chance it will take off like the other book did. And then I could like get into another flow of like putting out small like holiday themed books and stuff. So that's my goal. But long story short, if you guys leave reviews, it's so helpful and they're so appreciated. And it's, it's just like, it's everything to me. I check for reviews all the time and I just read them all. Even if they're bad, leave it. Because like I said, I'm gonna make more books in the future and I would love to, um, and I would love to improve the next ones. All right, so I'm done telling the story about the book. We have one more cut to make. And here we go. Let's seriously pray that they don't fall apart in the air fryer. I'll be so depressed if they do, but I don't think they will. Right. Uh oh. It's gonna get messy in my air fryer too, because it's just I'm just raw dog in it. Like there's no uh, there's no parchment liner in here. It's literally just it's just cream cheese touching the the dangerous Teflon. Okay, so here we go. And I do want to try this. Uh, will you ever go to KetoCon? I went to KetoCon last year. I didn't go this year because I just didn't get invited. All right, so I want to try it with a little bit of balsamic vinegar. Yeah, the cream cheese is definitely gonna melt. So we're just warming it up. We're gonna do like five minutes. I mean, I don't think it needs to be in there that long. But even if it melts, I don't think the liner would save it because I'm just gonna run the air fryer with water inside of it anyway. All right, we're putting some balsamic vinegar on here. Oh my God. Mm. All right. I had the bite without, I had the bite with, this is a must. Wow. Thank you, Mando. Katie, it's, it's so delicious. So you're saying if I would have put the prosciutto side down, I can still do that. I can take them out and do that. It's okay, whatever. I'll, I'll keep an eye on them through the window. So far, they look good. Is your first book still available? Yep, uh, Breaking Up With Carbs is on Amazon. What's up, Aaron? Happy Sunday.
So Pam, I like your tip on the, the longer strokes of cutting because whenever I chop vegetables, Anna will watch me. And there's two things she makes fun of me for. So I have this little thing. This is like my super tiny cutting board that I'm obsessed with. If I'm chopping up a zucchini or, uh, or onions or something, I always use this thing because these giant cutting boards, when you put them in the sink, our sink is kind of dirty. When you put them in the sink, it takes up half the sink. And usually when Anna and Sophia are here, we have this thing in. So I thought we were getting this giant sink, like, oh, I can finally just throw dishes in and it's a big sink but we have this in for bottles. So if I use a big cutting board and I put it in here, it's like, it takes up the whole thing. And I, I hate having a sink that's just like filled with stuff. So I love this because it's so tiny, but I'll sit there with like a knife and I'm cutting improperly and it's like spilling over the sides and I'm like trying to push it back on. And I just have such a terrible method of cutting things. And that's another thing Anna tells me, use a bigger cutting board and when you're cutting, do the like thing where you'd go long and then you, whatever. Uh-oh. I got kind of distracted and the cream cheese is starting to brown. I think we have a few more minutes before it's like super, super burnt. We're gonna do a few more minutes. Maybe like two more minutes. I'm excited. And the reason I don't wash the cutting board right away is because sometimes they, they're like grainy and I don't know, I just... I also don't use... I, if you saw my story to this morning where I talked about uh, using bigger cups, I also never mix up my Ultima. Um, I'm just like an example for all of our flawed ways of living, it's okay. I'm, I'm doing okay, I'm pretty happy. But, uh, but I did a story about bigger cups, right? Speaking of like how annoying it is cleaning cutting boards and put, fitting them into the sink. I said you should always drink out of bigger cups because it makes it easier to drink more water. And I'm sure a lot of people would be like, why don't you just use the, the big hydro flask or like the big you know, stainless steel mug? And we have those, and you know what happens to them? They set in a cabinet, undrinkable, because when I put them in the dishwasher, they get all this like brown stuff on the inside of it. They, the dishwasher does not clean them. If I put this in the dishwasher, it comes out good as new. If I put this in the dishwasher, there's all these weird speckles in it. And I'm not gonna sit here with like a giant brush and you know, Oh no, I got too distracted. All right, I think this is perfect. Here we go. Do these little things get too hot to touch? Ooh. I used your Ultima code, thank you. Hey, I hope you love it, Mama Bev. One tip, guys. So the Ultima code, uh, the Keto Snacks, is for your first order. I believe if you've used somebody else's code, it will still let you use my code. But once you've used my code, it's just like a one-time thing. So I would stock up. I had somebody in my DMs tell me that yesterday, that they used my code, but they stocked up because it was like a one-time thing. So... That is something that I would do if you want the 20% off and you plan on drinking a ton of Ultima. I mean, I don't think this stuff goes bad. I have some jars of flavors that I don't always drink from a long time ago. All right, so now what we're gonna do, I used your Ultima code too. Hey, I love it, Kit Kat. What flavors did you get? Just ordered your book. Hey, let's get it, Dubstep. All right, you know what? We're gonna get fancy. 
We're gonna get fancy and put these on here. Actually, this is like too small. I need the big one. And this part of the live is usually boring. I'm just like getting it ready to take a picture of it. But the good picture, I don't even know if it does anything. Like, I don't know if people go to my profile and they see good cover photos and they're like, oh, we should follow him. He has good cover photos or like why people hit the follow button. But I have been growing a lot ever since I had a few recipes go viral recently. And uh, so I'm trying to hit a million. Maybe we'll hit that in like the next two months. Which, a million followers as a keto account isn't really a million followers because most people who do diets, this is just a weight loss fact, 95% of them. So 95% of dieters will go on to gain everything they lost back and just go back to their old eating habits. So if I can do a good job and keep like 20% of my followers engaged, which is kind of what it... Not really engaged, but like 20% of my followers see most of my videos. So if I have 200,000 people who are watching keto recipes and getting inspired by it, that's like way better than the actual diet retention rate, which is like 5% of people stick to diets. So that is something that I'm proud of is like, all right, I, I might have almost a million followers, but I have 200,000 people who watch most of my reels. And if that many people are doing keto, that's like 20% of them compared to the 5% of dieters who actually stick to diets. I think that's a, a big accomplishment. I think the toothpicks make it kind of ugly. What do you guys think? My son is here waiting for you to say hi to him. His name is Chase. Can you please say hi to Chase? Hey, what is up, Chase? What's in the cream cheese? It has... Pepperon Chinese and uh, Italian seasonings. So what do you guys think? It looks kind of weird like this. Should I take out the, the toothpicks or do the toothpicks make it look fancy? Debster, you say it's perfect. Thank you. I'm gonna put the recipe in the caption. Lonnie, I'm sorry, I was, I was focused. It's hard for me to set things up and talk at the same time. So I, it's like doing three things at once. I can do two things at once. I would take the toothpicks out, keep them in. Most people are saying keep them in, okay. I think I just need to take it from this side. Oh, that looks good, okay. I'm not gonna bore you guys. I'm gonna eat one with the balsamic glaze and then I'll take a good picture because this could definitely go in the next book. All right, which one is the ugliest? This one, I think this little tiny one. All right, what was Amy's idea? Yeah, the toothpicks do make them feel tasty. No forks to wash, exactly. And less dishes to wash is my favorite thing. Hmm. I think this has potential to look really nice if I take a lot of time on the picture. So we're just gonna eat this one. Oh my God. Oh my God. A hundred times better air fried. They were good cold, but wow. Oh my God. So
so good. The only thing I would change, I, would, I wouldn't I would use as much uh, Parmesan as I use. I think just cream cheese and pepperoncinis would be good. But the, the Parmesan just made it, it's just a little bit too much Parmesan. So I think even in the caption, instead of an ounce of Parmesan, I'll say like half an ounce of Parmesan. I think you just need a little bit. Guys, these are so good. And I'll explain this, okay? So balsamic vinegar has four net carbs of sugar, obviously, for a tablespoon. But if we measure out a teaspoon, right? This stuff is expensive, so I don't wanna waste it, but if we measure out a teaspoon, which is one carb, if I eat four of these, Let's just pretend I'm pouring it on my little thing. I just do like a few drops, right? That's like half a teaspoon. So realistically, if you do, if you eat four of these, you're eating two teaspoons of this, which is only two net carbs. So even if you got wild and you ate the whole tray, it would still be no more than four net carbs. And then the prosciutto doesn't even have carbs. Cream cheese barely has carbs. The pepperoncinis don't have carbs, so you can get away with balsamic vinegar unless you're just, uh, you know, like chugging it out of the bottle or something. But all right, guys, I'm going to try and get a, uh, a, pic a picture of these. I think these could definitely be next book worthy. I just, I have to use, I have smaller toothpicks in the garage. I think the smaller toothpicks and then drizzling the balsamic on top, these have potential to look really nice. So I'm gonna get out of here. I love you. I believe in you. I pick Anna up tomorrow. So I should be able to go live. I don't know. Um, it depends on how her trip to the airport is. So if Anna has a very stressful day tomorrow, and Sophia cries on the plane, which she did really good on the plane ride to New York, but if she cries the way home, and then she's like, it's just a stressful day of traveling for Anna, I'll probably just hang out with Sophia. I mean, I wanna hang out with her anyway, so. I'll either go live while wearing Sophia, or I, I just, just expect me to be with Sophia. So if I do go live, I'll probably be wearing her. If not, it's because I'm playing with her. Um, but I'll definitely see you guys Tuesday either way. So shout out to everybody who has gotten the book, left a review. Terry, the Ultima code is Keto Snacks with a Z. I talked about it in my stories, but uh, shout out to everyone who just shows up and hangs out. This community is so much fun. When I'm, I went live last night for a few minutes because I was like, all right, I gotta, I just haven't hung out with anyone. I just felt like I needed to socialize. So. I went on a walk last night and went live and you guys are my, you guys are like my best friends and go, coming on here every day, it just, I don't have a lot of friends in like the physical world. I have a few, but uh, this is just like my companionship, you know, and I love you guys. I believe in you. I'll see you tomorrow.